We're welcome today to all our canvases watching in Pitt Meadows, Commercial, Strathcona, Online. Woo! As you can tell, we're very excited today. We can't wait to have our guest speaker, Pastor Ray Bevan, come and share the word with us. He's from Newport in South Wales, from King's Church there. We pastored for 25 years, and now through a succession, there's another pastor in that place, but he's traveling and speaking. And uh, we got to know uh, Pastor Ray through a good friend, our friend in Calgary, Anthony Greco, another pastor, and he said to us, Dave, you got to have Ray come speak at your church. He's, he's the real deal, and he's going to be such a blessing to you, and we have many mutual friends. Uh, he introduced Ray as uh, an old rocker, you know, and he said there was a recording company called Decca Records, and uh, apparently, and I asked Ray if this is a true story, he said it was, that they, they had a choice between his band and another band, and they chose his band, but they made a huge mistake, because the other band was the Beatles. <laughs> What's that? A massive mistake, he says, yeah. And uh, so God no doubt called him into the music industry, but more than that, God has called uh, Pastor Ray to be a, a pastor, an evangelist, someone who has a heart for the local church. We're blessed to have him today at all our campuses and here as well. So would you please give him a really, stand up, give him a warm Vancouver Coastal Church welcome as he comes and shares. When the road gets dark You can no longer see Let my love go as Have a little faith in me Where the tears you cry You can believe, listen, give these loving arms a try, have a little faith in me, have a little faith in me, have a little faith in me, do you believe it? Have a little faith in me. Have a little faith in me. And where your secret heart cannot speak so easily, listen. Come here, darling, from a whisper star. Have a little faith in me. And when your back's against the wall, turn around and you will see. Listen, I will catch you. I catch you when you fall. Yeah. Have a little faith in me. Have a little faith. It's like Jesus speaking to your heart. Have a little faith in me just a little it's all you need have a little faith in me yeah have a little faith in me i've been loving you for such a long time expecting nothing in return come on faith just a little faith Eternity is our friend, cause it has no end. Come on and have some faith, oh yeah. I will always love you, never let you go, no, no, no. Come on and have faith, just a little faith. I will never leave you, no, no, no. Oh, have some faith, just a little faith. 
I will always love you. I will never, never let you go. Come on and have faith in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I know what you're thinking. My God, he looks like Johnny Depp. <laughs> I know. I have this problem, Dave, everywhere I go. I go through airports, Johnny, Johnny, sign, no. It's a cross that I have to bear. It's the first time for me to be in Vancouver. You have an amazing city here. Can I hear a big amen here? And we got all these people, uh, welcome from Pitt Meadows, Strathcona, Commercial, Hong Kong, Seattle, London, Sydney, wherever you're from, let's give it up for these guys that are watching online. Awesome! Woo -hoo! Hey, what about, what about, what about three cheers for Jesus? Hip, hip? Yeah. Hip, hip? Yeah. <laughs> hip, hip? Yeah. Now let's give him a real clap and a praise that's worthy of his name. Come on. Somebody stop me. Well, Dave and Cheryl. Cheryl, you have to be uh, 35, 36 years of age, surely. I mean, when she told me your age, I thought, no, you shouldn't be lying as a pastor's wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give it up for two amazing people right here. I mean, I've only, I've only met them today, but... You know, some people you just really connect with. I feel a real connection. And I, I just, I, I'm excited about tonight and tomorrow morning. I believe that God has given me a word for you. Now, just to give you a little bit of a background, I was a rock singer in the 60s. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, when, 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 when they, this is pre-cassette. This is vinyl. Do you understand what vinyl is? Like little round things. So, uh, uh, and I, I actually, I, I had no religious background, thank God. And I, I, was, I was in a rock band and I went to a cinema to watch a movie called The Greatest Story Ever Told. I thought it was a Western, seriously. <laughs> the greatest story ever told. I gotta go and see that movie. I thought it was a Clint Eastwood movie. I went. It was a film about the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. And right there in the cinema, the Holy Spirit made Jesus real to a 20-year-old dope-smoking uh, person. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an adjective. And right there in the cinema... Uh, God made Jesus real to me. I'm so glad the Holy Spirit goes to the cinema. Amen. He will go anywhere where Jesus is lifted up and exalted. And, um, yep, yeah, so my name is, uh, so here I am. I got saved. My name is Ray Bevan. I am 33 years of age. No, no, listen, no, listen. No, give me, give me some space here. I'm sitting in the back garden with my granddaughter. She's eight. Her name is Eva. And we are sitting in the back garden just discussing the problems in the Middle East, and she was coming up with some amazing solutions. And, um, and she, she looked at me and she said, Bumper, she said, how old are you, Bumper? And I said, this was three years ago, I said, I'm 65 years of age, Eva, and she starts crying hysterical. And I'm trying to calm her down. I said, Eva, why are you crying? She says, Bumper, I don't want you to die, Bumper. I'm thinking, there's this kid prophesying to me now here. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to die, Eva, but Bumper, you'll be a hundred soon. <laughs> and everybody dies when they're a hundred. And then all of a sudden, this look of wonder. You know, like when E.T., when, when Elliot saw E.T. for the first time, that look of wonder came over her face. And I said, Eva, what's happening? She says, Bumper, I know what to do. I said, what? She said, I'm going to make you 30. <laughs> I said, okay, let me call a few friends. I think a few friends could do with this as well. I said, how are you going to make me 30, Eva? 
bumper. She says, fairy dust. And of course, I should have known. Everyone knows that, right? So I said, well, Eva, where are you going to get the fairy dust from? Or bumper, you are stupid. Tinkerbell. <laughs> I said, well, she said, last night the tooth fairy came and left me some money <laughs> under my pillow and left me a bag of fairy dust. Now, I'm going to throw the fairy dust over you, okay? Are you ready, Bumper? I said, how much have we got? Have we got a lot of it? Because it's going to take a, th a little bit to do. She said, are you ready? She threw the stuff over me, and I went with it. I, I'm losing my breath, Eva. What's happening? I can't breathe. I, there's like electricity going through my body. She says, Bumper, don't fight it, Bumper. Don't fight it. <laughs> Just go with it, Papa. <laughs> and then, and then, and then when, 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 I, I said, wow, what has just happened to me? Papa, you are now 30. <laughs> and she went off to play with her dolls. Give it up for my granddaughter. I am 33 years of age. She sent me, a, she sent me a birthday card the following year. Happy 31st birthday. And you know when she was walking away, how many of you know that God speaks to us in the normal day-to-day -day stuff of life? And when she was walking away, she said, he, the, the Holy Ghost said to me, Ray, why can't you be like this with me? Unless you become like a little child. He said, you're not going to experience the wonder of my grace. And he said, you see, my granddaughter lives in a world where magic mirrors speak. She lives in a world where wooden boys become real boys. Where, where, where uh, pumpkins become golden carriages. Where beasts become beautiful princes. She lives in this world. Now, we know it's fantasy, but she believes it's real. She lives in a world of wonder. And the Holy Ghost said to me, Ray, I have brought you into a world of wonder that is real and powerful and amazing, and you treat it like it's fantasy. And I believe with all of my heart, my heart and the remainder of my life, the anointing on my life, God spoke to me quite clearly and said, Ray, the latter part of your life, for the remainder of your life, I'm going to send you out into my body, and I, I'm, I'm armed with the gospel of the grace of God. I believe all over the planet, the Holy Spirit is restoring or desiring to restore the wonder of the grace of God back to our lives. Can I hear a big amen in this house? It's time, it's time to become childlike again. You see, I honestly believe that religion has robbed grace of its wonder. And when I talk about religion, I'm not talking about some organization. I'm talking about the essence of religion is anything we try to do in our own strength to be made right with God. Or anything we do in our own strength to maintain a relationship with God. That's religion. And it's robbed the grace of God, of its wonder. See, religion is man respecting God. Christianity is man receiving God. That's the difference. Christianity is not the sacrifice we make. Christianity is the sacrifice we trust. And when God flips the coin and we begin to understand it, you see, for religion to work, uh, two elements are needed, an angry deity and a guilty conscience. You get those two working, you got um, a successful religion right there. Um, it's like for too long, I believe, and I've been a pastor for 25 years, and for too long, the church has been a place where a guilty preacher has been telling a guilty congregation how to feel more guilty. Thank God there is a revolution like a tsunami racing across the planet called the Grace Revolution. And God is desiring to, to restore 
the wonder of grace back to the church. Am I talking to the right people here tonight? I love it. I love it. In fact, when I handed the church over, when I transitioned the church, uh, the Lord said to me, Ray, not only are you setting in a son today, but the church is sending out a father. And he said, I am going to anoint you. There's an anointing coming upon your life. And I'm going to send you out as an abolitionist to my church. I had to check in the dictionary what that meant. And then when I discovered that an abolitionist is someone who delivers somebody else from slavery. And he said to me, the biggest form of slavery on planet earth today is in my church. My people are worshiping me in chains. And he showed me, I saw it, the 400 years, the children of Israel worshiping Yahweh in chains. But you know what? Armed with the gospel of the grace of God, I am seeing hundreds and thousands of believers being delivered from the chains of guilt and condemnation and inferiority and fear. Come on, somebody help me in this place. And it's the gospel. It's, it's when you... It's when we become like children and recapture the wonder of the grace of God. There's a wonderful translation of grace I love. It's, and and one, one translation is this. Grace equals joyful surprise. I love that. Grace is the factor in my life that causes me to live my life surprised. I'm surprised with all my fears and my insecurities, I'm surprised that he still uses me the way that he does. With all my bad decisions and failures, I'm continually surprised with wonder how he takes them all and works them together for my good. I'm continually surprised with all my refusals to forgive and show grace when I'm hurt or betrayed. I'm surprised that he always dispenses grace and forgiveness to me. Am I looking at a bunch of surprised people in this place also tonight? Come on, somebody say amen. Unless you are surprised by the grace of God, you have no understanding of it. When I want to give up, like some of you here tonight, and I'll explain in just a moment why that is. When you want to give up and turn back and you have no passion and, uh, to serve God anymore and you want to walk away, I'm surprised that he never gives up on me. That he, he always sticks by me, even when in my heart I do not want to stick with him. Somebody help me in this place and say amen. In fact, that song I sang to you tonight, Have a Little Faith, it's a secular song. But I, in fact, uh, this album here, uh, Grace to the Rescue, you can buy it after if you like. That's the style of the music. I put it on this album called Grace to the Rescue. Um, uh, 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 have a Little Faith, because I was, I was at a point where I, I, as a minister, I wanted to give up. I wanted to just give up. And I was going through this horrible period and my friend called me and said come up and stay with me for a while and I went up to his house and I was so down so depressed so wanting to give up and and I sat down he said listen to this song and he played me that song have a little faith in me and it was just like Jesus took the microphone and sang it to me personally come on Ray have a little faith in me at times when you don't want to read the Bible at times when you don't want to pray. At times when you haven't got the energy to lift your arms in praise. I want to tell you, those are the times that Jesus will find a way to get to your heart. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you see, he's so wonderful. He will get to you. And we think God will speak to us through the Bible. Sometimes he does. You speak to us through a prophet. But you could be walking around the supermarket reading the contents of a packet of frozen peas and the Holy Ghost somehow. If that's the way he gets to you, he will get to you somehow. 
And for me at that moment, it was through a song. And that's why I put all them songs on there. But I tell you this, when, I, when, I, when I'm unfaithful in my service to him, he always remains faithful to me. Do you know what really blows me away? The, the, something that takes my breath away. When I am at my weakest, emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally, he chooses those things. To reveal his greatest strength. For when I am weak. I wish it was different. You will never experience the grace of God. In its awesome power. Until you want to give up. <laughs> Come on somebody say. Is this helping anybody here? I, I'm going to get saved again after this service. I, I just, just to make sure. Listen to this. And when I hurt other people with my words and my actions and I'm filled with regret, he comforts me and he speaks to me and he says, Ray, listen, let me heal those you hurt. I'm just surprised that grace keeps on counting when life has counted me out. Grace keeps on counting when religion has counted me out. Grace keeps on counting when people have counted me out. Imagine it's a boxing match in the ring. We have a Christian working out his destiny and he's fighting with the devil. The audience comprised with 10,000 Christians cheering Christian on. He's doing great. He's smashing the devil all the way around the ring and the crowd are going, great, give him one for me, Christian. And he's doing great, bam. And then all of a sudden, Christian gets distracted with something and the devil comes and smashes him on the chin and he hits him on the floor and he's out for count and the referee starts the count. The crowd goes silent. The referee starts one, two, three, four, Five, there's no movement from Christian. The crowd are screaming, get up, Christian. You cannot allow the devil. You were doing so well. The referee carries on. Six, seven, eight, nine. There's no movement. The crowd goes silent. And the referee counts ten. The devil stands on the bottom ring of the bottom rope of the ring and punches the air and screams at the crowd in contempt and says, easy, next. Then a shudder of shock and horror goes through the devil's being as he heard these words come from the other side of the ring. 11, 12, 13, 14, somebody help me here, 15, 16, the devil runs across to the referee whose name was called Grace. And he says, that's not fair. And Grace says, I know it's not fair, but I'm going to keep on counting till my servant gets up off the floor and finish what I started in his life. Come on, give some praise to Jesus. Grace will keep on counting. And some of you have been knocked out on the floor and you've turned up here tonight. God bless you. You've, came, you've come here tonight with a broken heart. You've come here with a confused mind. You've come here. Well, I've got some great news for you. You're going to be joyfully surprised because before you came here, grace was waiting. Grace was keep. You may be on 4,655,774. Well, 775. He's going to keep on counting till you get up off the floor and finish what he started in your life. Hey, 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 hey. Woo! Mama. <laughs> Grace keeps on counting. Isn't that amazing? It's not about your behavior, good or bad. It's about what he did 2,000 years ago on the cross. And, and, and life, do you know, 
do you know when I was coming over here, uh, just preparing, I had to come a long way from the hotel to get here. Just about 30 feet. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and I, I was going to go in a different direction tonight. But I'm, I'm praying in my hotel room and looking over the message and the Holy Ghost just, just said, no, no, just go this way. And the knockout punch, the reason why some of you are on the floor here tonight and you, you find it difficult to get up is because you've been knocked out by unfair treatment. Life has been unfair to you. People have been unfair to you. Something has happened. It's unjust. It's not right. And you don't know how to deal with this emotionally. You, 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 you know, it's what they did to you, what they said to you, what happened to you is not right, and it's rocked you, and it's smashed you down onto the, to the floor. And, 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 and the Holy Ghost brought back to me that season when he sang the song to me. When, when it, the reason why I was on the deck, the reason why I wanted to give up, because I, was un, I felt unfairly treated. Betrayal is a horrible thing. And, you know, people you trust, people that you've loved, suddenly, bam! How do you deal with this betrayal? How do you deal with unfair treatment? How do you respond emotionally? And I'm going through all this. And then Jesus said this to me, Ray. He said, when you're unfairly treated, he said, when I was unfairly treated... I didn't respond emotionally. I responded revelationally. And this is the difference. And he gave me this verse in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23. It's going to come up on the screen here, I hope. First, to, is it there? 1 Peter 2, watch this. This is Peter describing Jesus when he was unfairly treated at the extreme. He was on the cross. And it says... He did not retaliate when he was insulted. He did not threaten revenge when he suffered. And here it is. And this is the rhema for tonight. He left his case in the hands of God who judges fairly. I don't know about you, but you know... <laughs> When you're going through it and you meet some, you want someone to cry with you. You want someone just to be there with you. And, and, and you meet someone, bless them, Mr. Sunshine. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like you come to church, hello, hallelujah, oh, tiptoe to the turf in Jesus is wonderful. No, you, you, you really don't want that right then. And so, and so... Do you know the reason why we find it hard to let, to hand our case over? We, because emotionally, we don't like the consequences of trusting God. Do you know what that is? The feeling of vulnerability. You can't get more vulnerable than this. Come on, Jesus, come off the cross. Prove yourself. Defend yourself. Justify yourself. Come on. Do some miracle. The Bible says he did not retaliate when insulted. He didn't threaten revenge when he suffered. But he left his case. Will you feel vulnerable when you let go? Yes, you will. I'm not denying that. And it's a horrible feeling. But I tell you this, angels of God will go to work for you. God will begin to work for you. Come on, somebody say amen. And I know it's tough. And I, that's how you're going to get up. That's how you're going to get up. You know, there was an article on the internet for uh, some guy put this article. Blatant lies about me. Just blatant. Absolute blatant lies. And I'm mad. And I'm going to ring this guy. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort this guy out. The Holy Ghost said, leave it. Leave it. It's a lie. It's a plate. Leave it. But leave it. I left it for six years. This lie was on there for six years. Did I feel vulnerable? You better believe it. I felt so vulnerable. I, I wanted to do something. Six years later, the Holy Ghost said, okay, ring the guy now. I said, but I don't care anymore. He said, job done. Come on, somebody. We are more concerned about our reputation than our, than our relationship with him. And God said to me, Ray, don't be concerned with what people think about you. Rejoice with what heaven knows about you. Somebody help me in this place right here. That's the stuff you learn when you go through this. God's got a greater lesson in it. And some of you are going to do that tonight. And do you know what he said to me? And here's my, here's the rhema word for you tonight. Because we're going to do this. Because this is how God has sent this little hobbit from the Shire to tell you grace is still counting. Grace is going to joyfully surprise you tonight. And it's in a way you never thought. You know why? The spirit of Elsa is going to come on you. Let it think. Think about it. I know it's deep. I know it's deep. Think about Let it go. Let it go. You're going to sing it. You're, you're going to sing it. You're actually going to sing it. Let it go. You're going to do it. And you know, watch this. The, and this is the rhema. You are going to surrender control of an out of control situation. I want that to sink in. Because you try to control it emotionally. You try to control it circumstantially. You try to control it. Listen. This is what the Lord said to me. Ray, stay on the cross. It's safer there. Will you feel vulnerable? Yes. Will people still talk about you? Yes. Will the lies be less lies? No. Will you feel like you want to do something to get your revenge? Yes. But you're not going to respond emotionally. You're going to respond revelationally, and you're going to hand your case over into the hands of God. You are going to surrender control of an out-of-control situation. <laughs> you know what? Um, before I pray, I have a USB here with 10 hours of teaching on the wonder of the grace of God, my journey into this. You can check that out after. I really would advise you to get this because I'm only skimming the surface here. But right now, I want you to stand with me if you would. Have you received the word of God tonight? And those watching online, God bless you. I'd like you to stand where you are, there, and the, the local pastor there will, will guide you in just a minute. But just everybody look at me right now. I believe that what I've, the, the word that God's given me tonight is a right word for this night here. And some of you are on the floor and you want you to give up and you don't know how to, well, I believe that's why I'm here. And we're going to do something very simple but very powerful. That day when Jesus sang that song to me, have a little faith. He, he, he didn't say, I'm going to change everything. He said, no. I'm going to change you in it. You're going to be different when you come out of this. But what you need to do is trust me. Tonight, I'm asking you in Jesus' name to surrender control. I don't know whether it's a family thing whether it's a, a health thing, whether it's a financial thing, a ment I don't know what it is. All I know is grace is keeping on counting until you do this. Oh, you frightened the life out of me then. 
do you know what? I thought, my God, God the presence. I can hear angels' music here. <laughs> hey, listen. When I'm in this mode, when I'm in this mode, I expect anything. Trust me. I, anything. Angels are flying here. I don't... But I do know this, this place is filled with the grace of God. He's standing here. Jesus is here. And he's saying, come on. Give it to me. Surrender control. Let me surrender control of an out of control situation. And let me go to work on it. When you work, God rests. When you rest... God goes to work. Holy Spirit, I thank you. And those listening by live link or in the various venues. Holy Spirit, I pray. Jesus, you are walking from heart to heart here. Touching people's lives, helping them. And for some people, this goes really deep. This goes really deep. Only you can go to those places. Holy Ghost, I ask you right now, give people the courage to surrender control. I'm going to count to three. And if this message has been relevant to you, say, Ray, I'm going to surrender control. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave it here tonight. And I'm getting up off the canvas. And I'm, I'm just going to carry on trusting God. I'm going to let him work it out for me. If that's you, when I count to three, I want you to raise your right hand. Here we go. One, two, three. Raise your hand up high, high, high. Jesus, you look at these beautiful people. They're your people. Jesus, they are your, your people. Right now. Right now. As they raise their hand, it's an indication an outward indication of the desire of their heart. And right now, yes, yes, surrender him. Yes, surrender her too. I know it hurts. I know. I know you feel vulnerable. I know. I, I know. Revenge. Gives the person who hurt you importance. Forgiveness makes them obsolete. Let them go. Right now, people are, Lord, they're up. Your beloved, they're letting people go. They're letting people go. Once and for all. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that your peace will flood their heart and their mind. And we know based on faith Based on your word, as we hand our case, as we surrender our case to you, you will go to work and do what needs to be done. We walk away from it tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said, why don't we give the Lord another clap in the house, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Thank you, Pastor Ray, for a great word in season. And our campus is there at Pitt Meadows and Commercial Strathcona. Those watching online, I'm going to invite our campus pastor to come up, and they are going to be closing with you at your campuses and online. Uh, for us here tonight, what a, a great word it is for us. And uh, just to be able to release that, again, the importance of God's grace to carry us. And you, you may be here tonight, and you said, this is really new to me. And when you talked about the guilt and talked about religion, I thought, God, isn't God angry at me? And don't I have to work to do something right? This is where the Bible says, by grace, you've been saved. It's not a works, so nobody can brag, nobody can boast. This is how we come to him, the way we are. And oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he says, have a little faith, just as we heard in that song. Just a faith, just a little bit of trust that, God, I reach out to you. You're not here by accident tonight. Maybe a friend invited you. Maybe you saw it on the Internet or walked by. Maybe you've been here many times. 
But God definitely wants to have this intimate, personal relationship with you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. In the message, uh, Pastor Ray referred to how nothing can separate us from the love of God. All your failures will never, we're, we could be unfaithful, but he's never going to be unfaithful to you. He's there for us. And so tonight, I'm going to invite everyone just to take a moment. Let's bow our heads together. You may be here today, and you've never yet genuinely opened up your heart and said, God, I want you in my life. I want to receive this gift of grace. I want to receive your love, not on my merit, but what Christ did for me. When he made himself vulnerable, it takes you being vulnerable and saying, Lord, come into my life. So we'll all pray together, and I invite you to pray along with us tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, this Saturday night, I open up my heart. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen.